Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We're going to look at some familiar verses. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. The title of the message is, As we come to an end of 2023, as we come to an end of 2023. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. The Bible says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Just fine. We thank you once again for allowing us to get together in this local church to listen to your word. We ask you that you would fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, given the power and liberty and authority from you to preach your word unto us. Fill us, listeners, as well with your Holy Spirit. Help us not to think about or worry about things that are happening in our lives currently or in the future, but just focus on your word. We ask you that for those who are not saved, pray that today will be the day of salvation. Amen. And for those who are saved, we'll reflect on what we have done for you this past 2023 and the things that uh, we lack in service. Help us to learn and then be better Christians in 2024. Amen. Please protect us from devil's attacks. And thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So today's the last day. Sometimes, you know, last Sunday falls on the last day of the year. And 2023 has gone by very fast. As people say, time flies. Time flies. And for some, 2023 was a blur, just like 2022, 2021, 2020. But one thing that we all have to remember is, you know, what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. You know, if you look at it again, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's the universal law. That's God's law. You reap what you sow. Whatever you sow in 2023, whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether it be for your flesh or whether it would be spiritual, whether you did it for God or whether you did it for yourself, you will have fruits of what you've done in 2023. In that sense, you have to reflect today. You know, if you don't reflect today, I don't know what day you're going to reflect. Because obviously, you know, 2024 is coming along. And first day of the year, you usually think about New Year's resolution. And so on and so on. You don't think about, you know, anything else. How can I do better? How can I become a better human being? And many people, you know, this is a time where they set up their workout schedule. And they follow it for a couple of days and they fail, right? They set up their <laughs> diet schedule and they usually fail right away, yes. you know. Yes. But when it comes to spiritual stuff, you know, you can't be slacking anymore. You can't be a slacker. You can't be a lazy person anymore. Why? Because according to all the events that's happening right now and according to the word of God, you know, we're more closer than ever for the Lord to return. Yes. We're not the cults and crazy people out there where we put a date somewhere, right? We don't know. 
But we know for sure that based on the things that are happening, you know, we know Lord's coming back very soon. Amen. And, you know, we always have that good illustration. If you were coming to our church today, whether you were on 60 freeway, 10 freeway, you know, 15, anywhere, right? Yeah. As you get to the exit, whether it's Grove or Fourth or somewhere, you know you're getting closer to the church. Yes. Same thing, based on the speed of the, how the world's turning and the events that are happening in the world and the fulfillment of Bible prophecies, we know that Lord's coming back soon. Amen. In that regard, then you should be excited at first because yeah. Lord's coming back soon, but you should also be prepared for Lord's coming. And we know that, you know, at our congregation, I always say, you have to get one crown, you know. If you don't get any other crown, but you have to get that one crown, that's crown of righteousness. And who receives those crowns? People who's looking for the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you want Lord Jesus Christ to come today, then you're going to get that reward. I mean, at the, in heaven, you're praising Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everybody's throwing their crowns at his feet. If you got nothing to throw, what are you going to do? You know? It's always like you're at a you know, function and everybody's giving something to the recipient and you either forgot or you weren't prepared. You don't have it. How do you feel? You feel bad. Yeah. Right? And especially that person is someone that, you know, who is special to you. I mean, think about it. Uh, I mean, we have some married people here, right? Yes. You forget your spouse's anniversary, right? Yes. Or birthday, you know, make it worse. Actually, yes. both of them are pretty special day. And then suddenly, you know, your families are coming over. They're giving them presents, right? You're like, oh, what's today? Is it some special day, you know? And you forget that day. I mean, you feel horrible, right? Yeah. But as a bride of Christ, think about it. You have nothing to offer for your groom, Lord Jesus Christ, then that's, that would be a shameful day. Yes. And if you didn't do anything for the Lord until now in 2023, I mean, at least you still have a chance. Why? Because you're still alive. Amen. I mean, thank God that you could still breathe. Yes. As long as you're able to breathe, you can do something for the Lord. Amen. Whatever you have done, only thing that's going to last forever is what you have done for Lord Jesus Christ. Especially as a Christian, especially as a Bible-believing Christian, especially King James Bible, you know, KJV-only dispensationalist. Whatever you do, only thing that lasts forever is what you have done for Lord Jesus Christ. It's not how much money you've made. It's not, you know, how strong you become, how pretty, handsome you become. It's not about, you know getting married or whatnot. It's about what you've done for Lord Jesus Christ. That's going to last forever. And in that sense, if you sold all the carnal things, the fleshly desires, worldly desires, and devilish desires, then it's going to all burn up. Not only that, you're going to be judged by it. So think about it. How much things that you've done back in 2023 until now, you think you're going to be judged? For the wrong reasons. Yeah, a lot. If you have not lived for Lord Jesus Christ every single day, every single moment, every single minute, all of those things are going to be judged. Right. Lord is perfect. I mean, this is the most scientific book in the whole world. Woo! Forget about Einstein. Forget about those Nobel yeah. Prize winners. This is the most scientific. Yes. I mean, prophesied about a man before he was born in 48 places, right? Yes. Between 400 and 2,000 years before he was born. Right. I mean, that's the most impossible statistics out there. One to the 10 to the 157 zeros. It's impossible. There isn't enough atoms in the whole world, from what I understand, to fill that number. But Bible prophet, prophesies that and all came to be true. And we have so many more prophecies that's going to be fulfilled. How do you deny this book? Then many of you sitting here and listening, you believe in this book. Then if you believe in this book, you should be scared. Yes. You should be very fearful because there's judgment seat of Christ waiting for you and I if you're saved. And if you're not saved, white throne judgment is waiting for you. Either you're going to end up in heaven facing Lord and Savior, Him judging you before the marriage of the Lamb, 
or you're going to wake up and you're going to be standing at the white throne judgment, ready to be sent down to eternal lake of fire, burned forever and ever. Yeah. So you have two choices. You read what you sow. If you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to sow eternal damnation burning in hell. There are a lot of people, you know, we were out there street preaching yesterday. And some people are indifferent. They don't care. Yeah. But some people do care. And some people that do care, they get saved, right? Amen. And those people who get saved, they made the best decision in their life Amen. ever, right? Yes. To me, there are two decisions that's most important in your life, right? Your salvation and your marriage. That determines your direction of your life. Usually, you know, salvation determines eternity. And your marriage, you know, rest of your life, right? Yes. If salvation is not the greatest joy in your life, and it hasn't been in 2023, then you backslid it. Simple as that. Yes. You're just like that Ephesus church. Fully purposed. One of the most exemplary churches in the church history. But Lord told them to repent. One thing, you know, they're lacking. They lost the first love, according to what? Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. That's what happened to many of you and me. Yeah. In 2023, because of the, all the business of this world and life and everything that's going on, whether it's work, education, you know, raising a family, you forget to put Lord Jesus Christ as your number one. True. If True. out of 365 days, including today, if you have not put Lord Jesus Christ as your number one, if salvation hasn't been the greatest joy every single day of your life, you've sinned every single day. Yes. I mean, people say, you know, I try to live a perfect life. You know, I, you know, I know I can't be a perfect Christian, but I do it. Then I, I have a question for you. Is salvation the greatest joy of your, each day of your life? If not, then you backslid him. How can you put anything other more than salvation? Literally, that moved you from burning in hell for eternity to glorious eternal life in heaven. That's one thing that you and I can always fall back on. Even if you had a tough day, even if you had a sad day, even if you had an unbearable day, right. you know for one thing that even if I don't breathe anymore, I'm going to wake up in heaven Amen. once and for all. Yeah. Right. I mean, that is the greatest joy. That should make you smile. That should make you, you know, give happiness. But if that, the, that is not happening in your life, you know why? Because affairs of the world has gotten a hold of you. Spiritual, spiritual things don't matter to you as much anymore. I mean, as we come to close, as we come to end of 2023, we have to set our perspectives, our priorities straight yes. as we head into 2024. Don't try to do it, you know, starting tomorrow, right? No. You got to start doing it today, Amen. right? I mean, I'm going to start sowing to my future and for my love of my life. Who is love of your life? Right? Jesus. I mean, if, if you're trying to think, right, if you met a lot of people in your life, you're like, oh, who was my love in my life, you know? <laughs> you know, it's, okay, you have wrong priority, right? Yes. Okay, I mean, was it Jane, was it John, was it Doe, you know, somebody, right? No, your love of life should always be Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, he's giving you eternal life. I mean, he's the best friend. Thank you. He's inside of you if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior. Yes. I mean, if he's not love of your life, then who is? Right? I mean, for a lot of young children, they love their parents. They love their father. They love their mothers, right? Especially if they're loving parents, right? Even more than that, you should love Lord Jesus Christ more. Yes. You have a lot of loving spouses, wife and husband. Even more than that, Lord Jesus Christ should be number one. He's got to be number one every facet of your life, Amen. especially the love that you want to bestow upon anybody 
That should be Lord Jesus Christ. When that happens, everything else aligns itself. If you don't love Lord Jesus Christ more than anything, then it falls apart. You know, it's like, uh, you know, if you have a back problem, and from the lower back and up, and if it's not aligned right, it's going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to just pinch bad nerves, you know, pinch nerves, and it hurts everywhere. Why? Because it's not straight. If Jesus Christ is not the head on top, ask somebody who has neck issues. It just goes down to your back. It doesn't stay at the neck, right. unfortunately. It goes down to the back, and it hurts every other part of the body. If you put anything other than Lord Jesus Christ, then the rest of your life will suffer. And you could ask anybody. People who live any, I mean, a little longer than you, just ask them, right? Yes. When they did not put Jesus Christ at the right place, king of their heart's throne, then what happens? Rest of the thing just falls apart. And you could try anything. You could put millions of dollars trying to replace that. Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never happen. Pleasure for just season. People who give up faith, they're going to so miserable Christian life. What does that mean? Now, I'm glad people are here listening and people treasure, you know, Bible believers, you know, right doctrine. Yes. But for your selfish reasons, because you have a pettiness in you, because you're like a little child, you're a little baby in Christ, so you give up that faith. Yeah, you give up that truth, right? You know what's going to happen to you? If Lord tarries years from now, years from now, you could be a millionaire. You could have the best family in the whole world, but you'll be the most miserable Christian right. because you don't have the truth in you anymore. I've seen so many cases where people think that, you know what? I don't need Bible-believing church. I don't need the right doctrine, right? I could study on my own. I could go to different church who appreciates me more, right? I don't know what's the definition of appreciation, right? I mean, does like pastor, like do I have to like go call on you every single day? Hey, how are you doing brother? How are you doing sister, right? I mean, do I have to shake your hand every single moment, right? Do I have to acknowledge you all the time? You know, that's against what the Bible says, right? In Galatians 6, 3, for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. You're a deceiver, right? You're deceiving your own self. Amen. You want glory, you want accolade, you want applause, you want commendation from Lord Jesus Christ, not from human being, Amen. right? If I don't acknowledge you, then you're going to get more rewards in heaven, yeah. right? If I acknowledge you here, you're going to lose rewards in heaven because you got your glory here, right? But... Going back to it, if you have found the truth, whether it's through your friends, your spouses, your family, through internet ministry and everything, you got to take hold of it. You should never lose it. Yes. Right? If you lose it, it's very hard to get it back. Right. Yes. Something about this Bible-believing faith is that once you lose it, because of the pride that's in you, it's hard to get it back. Unfortunately, brethren, you and I are very selfish people. Yeah. And we never want to be proved wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why people get into fight. If each party sees the wrong that they did and admit to each other, problem gets resolved very quickly. Yes. Right? But why do people constantly fight and vicar with each other and quarrel? Why? Because not one, but a lot of times both of them just can't admit right. what they've done wrong. You know, look at 2023. How many times have you really confessed your sins like you should have? How many times have you always looked for an excuse for your mistakes, for your sins? Oh, she made me do it, right? He made me do it. My parents made me do it, right? I mean, there's some truth to it. If you've been a bad parent to your children, and children only saw you committing sin after sin after sin, they do have a case, right? At the end of the day, it's their decision, but they have a certain influence yeah. from you. 
If 2023 has been a bad year of being a parent, whether as a father or mother, then you got to repent. You got to get right with the Lord, right? Because your job as a parent is to nurture and, you know, grow your children according to the word of God. But if you haven't done that, then you really have to get right with the Lord. Because you're not only responsible for your own actions, you're going to be responsible for your children's actions. If you cuss a lot at home, your, your fault yes. if your child cusses. You know, the last thing is, right, you know why this verse is so scary? You reap what you sow, right? All the sowing that you've done with your mouth is going to come out from you as well as people around you. Yes. It will never be hidden forever. Right? All the thoughts that you have inside will eventually come out as well. Man, that's the scary part about being a human being. And that Bible clearly explains it. What's inside of you will eventually come out. Oh, yes. In 2023, if it hasn't come out yet, it's going to come out if you don't get right with the Lord. Amen. All the sins that you've been committing, all the sins that you've been doing, it will eventually come out and it will be exposed yes. if you don't get right with the Lord. I mean, that's scary part, isn't it? Yes. All the secret sins that you've been doing in 2023. I mean, there are many, many secret sins. Oh, yeah. And especially with cell phone nowadays, you could Woo. do many, many wicked things, right? From meeting wicked people, looking at wicked images, yes. to doing wicked things. You know, whether it's gambling, right? Yes. You know, anything else, right? You think that I could get away with it. Lord has given me grace to let me do it continuously. You know, people get into that false sense of security. Like, you know what? Lord hasn't punished me yet. That means, you know, it might last a little bit longer. No. Before you know it, he has to chastise you. And once that happens, from my own experience and from, you know, brethren, you know, people's experience who's been saved for a while, there's going to be a scar in your life. Yes. And that scar won't be gone until you go to heaven, until the day of the rapture. Yes. And you got to live with that scar. And that's going to be that part of your testimony of your life that's going to hold you back sometimes. Mm. Man, it's a, it's a horrible thing. When devil and your enemy has something against you that can use against you. Yeah. That's why the best thing is for a, you know, children to grow up in a Bible-believing church Amen. and be a good Christian man and woman. Amen. So you have less baggage. Yes. But I'm sorry, if you came in as an adult, you're going to have some baggage. Yes. And it's hard to get rid of it. I mean, if you got to ride with the Lord... That's one thing, great thing about the Lord. He forgets. I mean, He forgives and He forgets. But you still have to pay for it because He's a just God. Yes. Right? That's why as Christians, you and I have to be really be careful about sin. If you and I commit sin and having the idea that, okay, I'm going to ask the Lord to forgive me according to 1 John 1, 9, right? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. And that's true. And you think it's, you know, bright and shining and okay forever? No. What you've done, you still have to pay for it. Almighty God, fearful God, who will judge a soul for rejecting His Son as Lord and Savior and send Him to hell forever? And when those people have millions of excuses, I can't go, Lord. I had this, 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 this reason. And Lord will have every answer to them by playing their life. That God who will send a soul to hell forever. Good people we're talking about here. Yeah. Who try to live a good life. Sure. Even though they're self-righteous, yeah. right? They commit a lot less sin than you and I. Yes. But they're still going to burn in hell. That God, rightful judge, don't you think he's going to judge all your sins? Amen. That's how you have to, like 23, looking back 
and today is the last day, you have to get right. All of the sins, right? Yes. I mean, what is one common thing that you and I always forget to do? Be thankful, right? If you're not thankful, then you're committing sin. I mean, are you thankful that you're here? Are you thankful that you're still alive? And above all, as I mentioned, are you thankful for your salvation? Amen. Are you thankful for your first love, Lord Jesus Christ? Do you appreciate him every single day as if today is the first day that you got saved? If you're not, I'm sorry, whoever you are, including myself, you lived a very backslidden and sinful Christian life. Yes. And don't think that you're going to get away with it. As I mentioned, you know, I mean, there, there's Christians who's been saved longer than me, you know, and there's some Christians I've been saved longer than you. God is perfect God. He never gets you away with anything. Nothing. I mean, zero. Yes. Lustful thought you have. You don't get right with the Lord, He's going to judge you for it. Yes. Greedy, th greedy thoughts that you have, right? Everybody's greedy nowadays, right? Yes. The whole internet, the whole TV, social media, it's all about greed, right? I mean, greed moves everything. If you've been greedy, especially back in 2023, then you better get right with the Lord. Yes. Because that greed's going to consume you. When it's time to choose between Lord Jesus Christ and money, you're going to choose money all the time. And your mindset is this. Let me make money first, and then I'll serve the Lord later. Never happens. Never, never works like that. If you can't give your heart to the Lord when you have less money, how are you going to give heart to the Lord when you have more money? Right? right? Yeah. You're going to do more wicked things with that money. Yeah. There's zero chance that I'm going to give more money to God when I have a million bucks. You know, I'm going to really give tithes, right? You know, When you have 10 bucks and you can't even give a dollar to the Lord, you're like, you know, I'm going to give more to the Lord later in my life. It doesn't work like that, right? It's like you're expecting and you're wanting God to be on your level when you should strive to be as closest to the Lord's That's level right. as possible. Yes. I mean, you know, what's the purpose in our life? We want to be a witness to the lost creatures out there, Amen. and we want to be as much like the Lord every yes. single day, getting closer and closer. But if you're not doing that, and if you haven't done that, and if you're not going to wake up today and change and start doing that, 2024 is going to be just like 2023 or worse. Don't be a Debbie Downer and you're like, you know what, my life stinks, right? Why don't you go to third world countries? Yeah. They have no running water. They have no lights. They have to live with the bugs all the time. Yes. I mean, their water, I mean, I've seen countries in Africa, their water is muddy water. Man, we complain about water, how it smells, right? Even though it's purified or whatnot, right? Yeah. But they are just happy to drink any type of water. How spoiled you and I are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go to children's hospital. I mean, we have children who's born with incurable diseases and cancer. Yes. But they're so happy during holiday season when they just leave, receive some gift. Amen. And they don't complain like you and me, even though they should be the people with the most complaints. See, you and I are not thankful like we should be. And when, what's the opposite of being thankful? Complaining, murmuring. Yes. So you and I always murmur about everything, right? Our home, we should have a bigger home, cars, better cars, food, better food, you know, God forbid, better family, better children, better everything. I mean, why can't you be happy where you are? Amen. Then you're just complaining to God that, God, even though you say you provide all my needs, it's not enough. I don't think that you are good enough to provide what I need. I mean, that's what you're telling God every single day yes. when, you're thank when you're not thankful for every little thing in your life. That's why, I don't know about you, 2023, have you started each day with prayer? Have you started each day with word of God? Come on. If you haven't, you lived a messed up 2023. Amen. 
Yeah. I mean, it's just from personal experience. If for some reason, if I don't start the day with prayer and the word of God, I have a horrible day. Yes. I mean, it, it, there's no like different day, right? I mean, somehow because, man, I wake, I have certain things on my mind, and then, you know, I say I'm going to pray, and I forget. And I'm like, man, certain things happen, and God gets my attention. Hey, I think you forgot to do something. Oh, yeah. And I, I get it right away, right? But many of you don't even care about praying in the morning. I mean, Lord, Jesus Christ, I mean, he took time and prayed early in the morning. But when was last time for every single day in a year you pray, set a time every single day? Not when you are going through the hardship. Man, then you're going to pray, right? When things are hard and tough in your life, you're going to look for some help. That's That's you pray. But when was last time you pray when you're having the best day of your life? When was last time you're praying when you're just having a normal day of life? Yes. When was the last time you just prayed and prayed every single day? You have to set up a place. You know, 2023, you messed up when it comes to prayer life. Yeah. Then 2024, first get right with the Lord. Don't just ignore it. Oh, yeah, I had a bad prayer year. No. I mean, you have, Bible says pray without ceasing. It's a command. It's Lord's command according to 1 Thessalonians, right? Yes. Chapter 5. Then you commit a sin. Then you have to get on your knees. And go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, you know, I'm really sorry. And from the bottom of my heart that I didn't spend time with you like I should every single day. I mean, you got to ask the Lord for forgiveness. And you got to have a repenting heart. You got to be willing to turn from your ways and turn to the Lord and get right with the Lord. Because prayer is like your lifeline. Well, why would you neglect that lifeline, right? You're, you're like a fool. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. That's why I use this illustration. You're like a fool right before a big test. You didn't study at all. But you know God's going to bless you or something. So you put the textbook underneath your pillow and you sleep on it. And you expect God to give you all the knowledge. And then during the, right before the test, you pray to God, God, you know, help me to do well on the test. And then you fail the test. And then you start blaming God. God, how can you, you know? I'm your child. But you didn't do anything. Yeah. You didn't study. You didn't read. You didn't do anything from your part. And you expect Lord to do everything for you. You know, God of the Bible is capitalistic Bible, right? Salvation is free. Amen. Salvation is 100% free. So it's, you're a fool to ignore that salvation. Yes. You don't have to do anything. I mean, if, if Uncle Sam and said, you know what, here's a, $5 million for you, no strings attached. Are you going to be a fool like, I don't need it. You know, I don't want it, right? No, you're going to receive it joyfully and thankfully. Yes. But this is a lot more important, a lot more precious, a lot more, you know, costly than any of those things. Yes. Amen. I mean, money can't compare. No. If you understand, you know, if you compare each day to a dollar. No amount. I mean, if you're burning in hell, you're going to burn there forever. Yes. You can't compare it to money. But if you're saved, you trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, money can compare. You're going to be in heaven Amen. for all eternity. Yes. So if you're on the fence today, whether I should accept this free gift of salvation, then accept it. Amen. I mean, why are you being a fool? Take it. Right? It's like, you know, you're, <laughs> you're, if you're a little child, your favorite toy is like G.I. Joe, right? That's what it was when I was growing up, right? Here's the whole G.I. Joe says, son. Woo! Like, yeah. I'm going to be like, I love you, dad. Yeah. I receive it. Take I'm not going to be like, no, you know, you know, let me do something for you first, right? No. Well, let me go rake the reefs, right? Let me do all the vacuum, you know? Yeah. No, you just receive it, and then you start playing with yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Salvation is, I mean, it doesn't even compare. It's, you know, billion times, gazillion times better than that. Amen. Why would you even be on the fence? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is it too easy? Good is too easy. Yeah. I mean, you think you're going to follow the laws? Praise God. And you think you could keep every single law? No. And then you could receive that salvation? No one did. No. Except Lord Jesus Christ, who's Amen. perfect human and perfect God at the same time. Then, if you don't know where you're going tonight, make it sure. Yes. 
I mean, all you have to do is realize you're a sinner on your way to hell, right? Believe that Jesus is God. He died for your sin, shedding his precious blood. Repenting hard. It's not stop sinning. You realize who you are. You turn from your ways and turn to God and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Yes. Man, don't be a, those vain believers. Everybody believes nowadays. Do you believe in Jesus? I do. You know, everybody says he gives me money, right? You know, that's why I follow all those, you know, prosperity people, right? That's not really believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You know, as I studied Dr. Rockman, I know one thing always, you know, God stayed in my heart is that, man, what are you trusting to go to heaven? Yeah. What are you trusting to get you out of hell? That's it. If that's Lord Jesus Christ, then you're saved. If he's the person who's going to save you from hell once and for all. But if you're trusting any other things, oh yeah, you know, believe Jesus plus Holy Spirit experience plus doing good works. I have to speak in tongues, right? Which devil gives you, right? Yes. People don't even know the definition of tongues. Tongues is language, right? Yes. Even celestial language is Hebrew. Yes. So you have to speak in a certain language, right? To be considered speaking in tongues. And it was spoken by disciples to unbelieving Jews. Amen. And it's only for the Jews, right. right? You're not a Jew, right? And you're not an unbelieving Jew, right? And it's not for uh, believers. It's for unbelievers, yes. right? So forget about those things. You saw Jesus in your dreams? That's the devil. Amen. You know, he shows up as angel of light, yeah. right? Wake up. So if you are trusting in any of those false doctrines, you have to reject it Amen. and trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Because if I were to ask you, again, in 2023, if you got ever offended, if someone asked you if you're saved, either you're not saved or you're such a proud, backslidden Christian yes. that how dare they ask me. You know, I'll be happy. I'm happy when someone asks me if I'm saved Woo! because they care about souls. Yes. If I'm happy if someone gives me track because someone cares about soul. Unlike some people, you give them a track, they're like, oh, I don't need it, you know. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Are you? What are you trusting? Your self-righteousness? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I mean, may, I'm sure some of them are saved, but because of false doctrines, you know, yeah. they're messed up. Yeah. So people who come to our church, you know, a lot of brethren, even myself, will ask you, like, are you saved? Answer should be happy and jolly. Be like, you know, I trust that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He washed away all my sins with his blood. Right. That should be your answer. Yes. But if your answer is anything other, then you got to check it. Yes. You might be believing in vain. Because before I found the Bible believing truth, I, I did sinner's prayer every single day, almost. Yeah. Because I committed sin every single day. Yeah. No one ever showed me from the Bible. I mean, go to Calvary Chapel, go to Catholic, go to Methodist, Presbyterian, go to even a Southern Baptist, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? You committed sin? Uh-oh, uh-oh. You know, mm. come to me, you know? You, know, you got to stay in the church. You got you to come every single Sunday, right? You got to make sure you have that faith, right? You know? What faith, right? Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, yes. you get saved through the word of God. Amen. That's it. And this is your proof. If you don't have the word of God as proof of you getting saved, you got to check your salvation. Yes. I'm sorry. People say, oh, what about this people in the jungles, right? What about people in the Amazon, like Nile? They don't hear the gospel, right? If you follow your conscience, according to Romans, God's going to send the messenger to you. Yeah. The preacher to you. Amen. So don't worry about them, right? Amen. Just worry about yourself. Right. Don't reject the gospel because you think that some people won't hear the gospel and they're going to burn in hell. So I'm, I'm a just person, so I'm going to burn with them. I mean, how foolish are you, right? Let me just get a boiling water and splash it on you. I mean, it's so much harder. I mean, so much hotter, so much more torment, but it's forever. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people are such a fool, you know? They're like, oh, yeah, hell's nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, do you really want to find out? <laughs> Have you seen people burned at the stake? Have you seen people being burned alive at a burning home, houses? Have you ever been to a, like a burn victim's unit? I mean, have you ever been burned before? I mean, even a little tiny, 
Like, you know, you put your hand at the, you know, hot boiling pot and then you're like, or like oh man, right? Like, yeah, like into the world to you. Yeah. And those pain actually persist and last a long time. Yes. Something about burn, you know, injuries, right? And you're telling me that, oh yeah, I don't care. Man, you're the biggest fool. And if you're the head of the household, you're actually a husband and your mother, and then you're sending all of your family to hell with you. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house, Amen. right? Many times when head of household gets saved, high percentage, rest of the family gets saved. When head of the house will reject it, rest of the house usually rejects it. And you're, you have that responsibility. Yes. And as Christians in 2023, I mean, how many souls I mean, have you led to the Lord? How many souls have you given that precious seed of gospel to them? Amen. I mean, we have chick tracks. And especially, you know, People is coming to our church, you have zero excuse. Yes. Right. I mean, our chick track is freely available, right? I mean, we had a brother here from Australia last week, you know, Brother Nathaniel, right? I mean, I gave him like, you know, like 100 tracks. I mean, he was so happy. Amen. He wanted to go and pass them out. Yeah. He might have passed them out, you know, going to Pastor Jin's church last week, right? <laughs> in, in his stop somewhere, right? But as Christians, you are obligated. Everybody has a calling yes. to preach the gospel. How many times in 2023 I mean, have you sown the seed of the gospel anywhere? I'm so scared to open my mouth, right? You should be. You can't do it alone. No. You got to let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Amen. But you could always leave your track somewhere. Yes. You don't have to give it to him in person. Right. Leave it at a bench. If you're at a market, leave it somewhere, right? Yes. I mean, there are so many places you could just drop it off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you really appreciate what the Lord did and you don't want to be a coward Christian anymore, because 2023, just like every other year, majority of the Christians are cowards. Yes. They don't speak up for Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't want all their lost souls to get saved. I mean, if you're not speaking up, how are they going to get saved, right? I mean, I, I, hopefully you pray for certain people, but for just general person that you deal with, like you go to a fast food restaurant for lunch, you go to a restaurant, you meet someone at a market and stuff. I mean, are you giving them tracts? Are you giving them the word of God? How hard is it? Worst thing that could happen to you is what? I don't want it. Yeah. They're going to say, I don't want it. Okay, go on to the next person. Are you so afraid that someone's going to say no to you and they ruin your life? <laughs> I mean, you've heard a lot of no's from your families, right? Yeah. Husbands, you heard a lot of no's from your wives. Wives, you heard a lot of no's from your husbands. Children, vice versa. Yeah. So you're used to hearing no's. Sure. How is that going to stop you then when you're preaching the gospel? You should hear, hear some no's here and there. Yeah. Because they're... People on their way to hell, you're telling the track's gonna tell them that they're gonna burn in hell. Naturally, they're gonna be turned off by it. It's yeah. natural. If everybody just smiles and receives it, you know, they probably are such a self righteous person, they're just gonna throw that away. You know, I don't need this. But there are certain people that's gonna really hit them in the heart. Yeah. And those are the people who's gonna get saved. Yeah. And the, those are the people in heaven, they're gonna walk up to you and say, knock on your back and, like, hey, hey. Man, I got saved through your track. Yes. Praise the Lord. Man, how many people are going to knock on your back? Are you going to be like, if we stand up like in a row, are you going to be the last person? Like, no, hey, anybody ever going to knock on my back? And then some Christians ask you, did you do anything? No, no, no. I feel like, you know, someone's going to knock on my back because everybody else, you know, is coming up and say, you know, thank you, you know, because of what you did. You know, I got saved. Amen. 2023. I mean, just rewind it. I mean, what kind of witness were you for Lord Jesus Christ? If you've been a bad witness for Lord Jesus Christ, if you didn't do like what you should have done, just get right. Yes. You know, just confess your sins and get right. So that in 2024, starting 
tomorrow. I mean, starting today, yeah. right? Because yeah. other parts of the world is 2024 already, right? Amen. You know, just starting today, I'm going to do my best for the Lord. Amen. Every single soul and creatures that I see, I'm just going to preach the gospel to them. Yes. Preaching the gospel is not just about, you know, giving in the whole gospel plan. You know, you passing out a few, I mean, tracks, even saying a few words to them, you know. Yes. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? You know, I don't want you to burn in hell, right? Yes. I mean, those few words kind of hit a lot of people. Yes. I've never really had someone who does not react in any way when I told them, you're going to burn in hell if you reject Jesus Christ. Something boils in them. Oh. Many times they'll cuss at me. Yeah. Many times they'll get angry. But that's the start of conversation. Certain people want to get saved because certain people are thinking about hell, yeah. right? Yes. And then you are that person Lord put in their life to give them the answer. Amen. Give them the gospel. So certain times, you know, I, mean, I, get, I get surprised. They're already ready to get saved, Amen. right? <laughs> yeah, so you got to meet different type of people. Yes. But you have to do something to meet different type of people. Amen. You have to do something for the Lord to hear anybody knock on your door. I mean, knock, knock on your back, right? Yes. And finally, in 2023, have you been looking for the Lord to come back, as I mentioned? Have you been looking for that blessed hope, Amen. right? If your life is about salvation, loving the Lord, then you gotta want the Lord to come back every yeah. single day of your life, right? Looking for that blessed hope. I mean, do you want Lord to come back today? Yeah. If you haven't done that in 2023, obviously some sin has stopped you from wanting Lord to come back. Yes. I mean, if you're in a wrong relationship, you don't want Lord to find you in that wrong relationship. Right. If you're gambling, you don't want Lord to be finding you, you know, doing some slot somewhere, right? Yeah. I mean, if you are like doing drugs, you don't want Lord to be coming and finding you doing drugs, right? Right? I mean, if you're looking at wicked stuff on the internet or TV, you don't want Lord to be finding you on that yeah. time or those days. No. But if you are looking for Lord to come back every moment of your life, looking for that blessed hope, then you're going to live for the Lord. Amen. 2023 might have been a disappointment for you, yes. but it could be a best learning experience for you as well. Absolutely. You don't want 2024 to be same or worse than 2023. No. Then Lord's not going to find you as a faithful servant, oh. but you and I want to be found faithful. Yes, sir. At the end of the day, as I close, don't you want Lord to call on you? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. Come down to the joy of thy Lord. Woo. That's what yes. I want to hear. 2023 is closing, brethren. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to learn from it yes. and do more for the Lord? Be a better Christian. Be a different Christian for the Lord in yes. 2024. Let's pray. Dear Father, time flies, Lord. 2023 was a blur to many. But I wonder how many have sold enough things to bring glory to you or did all of us, like majority of the people, sold all the things to our flesh, those carnal ways, that's going to just burn up and turn out to be nothing. Help us to confess our sins, Lord, get right with you, Lord. Even the simple things, you know, we need to pray always. We need to rejoice all the time. And we need to witness all the time. Read the Bible all the time. Be a good testimony for you. Be a good testimony to the family. If we haven't done any of that, and we did it very sparingly here and there, Lord. Shame on us, backslidden Christians. We're less than nothing, but we always think we're something. Help us to get rid of the mind and help us to just live a life that's, you know, full of you as our number one, bringing glory to you. And every decision that we make, we want to do it for you, Lord, and as number one. We want to live a Holy Spirit filled life. We want all of our decisions to be based on whether it will be pleasing to you or not, Lord. I pray that 2024 upcoming year, you know, you come, Lord. You come soon right now, Lord. And if you tarry, Lord, help us to be found faithful, Lord. I pray that you bless the rest of the services today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.